Red and white are the colors of the day on At Your Leisure. I'm Darren Kindred. Join Jill and me as we hit the trail with the family that takes us from blue skies to snow flurries and back again. Where are we? We'll have all the details. Then Steve Human heads north and finds that winter is still around if you know where to look. Finally, Terry Wood goes for a ride on the first motorized unicycle. That's right, there's only one wheel. How do you ride it and how does it actually run? Find out as you own the outdoors with At Your Leisure. at your leisure I'm Darren Kinder and I'm Jill Kinder and today we're down here in Moab with Canyonlands Jeep Adventures having a great time doing a little four-wheeling but it's a little blustery right now and that's the beauty of having a Jeep is you can get inside and even on a bad day still have a great yeah, time get out of the elements that's right it's gonna be a great time today we're gonna go through all kinds of trails and stay warm inside the Jeep but to still enjoy all this amazing amazing beauty down here and we've got our daughter Jaden here with us today and just to show you that this this is just kind of a family adventure it's not something you have to have a super duper rock crawler to go out here and enjoy these trails I mean just a basic simple Jeep or any four-wheel drive can really come out of here and have a good time so we're gonna get started and we're gonna first of all show you the trails <laughs> Today we did an easy to moderate trail. We did Schaefer Trail and we did the Long Canyon Trail. It's one of our preferred trails out here. It's a great trail for family fun. I've been to Moab a million times it seems like, but I've never been over on this area. And so uh, we've done some new trails that I haven't done and got to see some new sites. And we had a snowstorm blow in that was phenomenal. And uh, now as you can see behind me, it's gorgeous. Definitely something I haven't seen before. I've come up here a lot of times, but I've never seen this stuff. It's a very good road. It's graded. Normally, I'm going into the more moderate rock crawling kind of stuff, so it's more technical, uh, less scenery. Today was like 99% scenery. That Wall Street is beautiful. Boy, the, the rock cliffs going straight up off the river like this. It's so pretty through here. And uh, obviously very accessible via asphalt road to get to. Do you think your parents are cool that they bring you out here? Yeah. But they're not cool otherwise. <laughs> we have 17 Jeeps uh, in our fleet, and it seems to be just the right amount. People will come back from running a Jeep, and they'll be in the wow factor because they've done something that they never thought they could do. They can't believe they went down the Schaefer Trail, which is a trail that will definitely get your attention. Well, we've been enjoying our jeeping so far. We had a fun little trail there. Yeah, this is really easy to get to. It's the Potash Road just coming right out of Moab, just on the north side of Moab. So it you know, starts off as a highway and then turns into a nice little dirt trail. And uh, this is Fossil Point. It is, and I hear the road gets a little tougher after this, so we'll see. Yeah, just ask Thelma and Louise. This is the place where they jump their car off the cliff, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not getting too close. But <laughs> so the views are absolutely spectacular. It's panoramic all the way around us, and the Colorado's from one side to the other side. And the red rocks are just vibrant. It's so beautiful out here. Yeah, and the trails, it, it basically is just driving right alongside the river all the way up through, through here. We saw some bighorn sheep, yeah. but they weren't standing next to the sign. I didn't understand that. <laughs> well, Darren, I'm not likely to find any bighorn sheep or red rock for that matter, but I am searching for something a little bit colder anyway. I'm Stephen Human. Now, this year hasn't been the snowiest on record for the West, evidenced by the fact that I'm out here in the mountains hiking. But if you head north, you can still find some stellar snow and some backcountry views you might not find anywhere else. The small town of Dubois, Wyoming. You can drive through it literally in about two minutes. Originally, it was named Never Sweat because of the constant warm and dry winds that scour the area. But the name was changed by the Postal Service because they found Never Sweat to be unacceptable for an upstanding city. Even here, the winter has been light this year, but 10 minutes out of town, you'll find a land 
deep in the clutches of Jack Frost with enough activities to keep you busy through spring's thaw. I've always said that this is one of the most varied kind of landscapes because kind of to the east of Dubois, the town that's near here, there's kind of a badlands sort of area. There's a wilderness area, there's a lot of forest. It's very varied and it's very remote. It's one of the most intact ecosystems in the United States, partly because of all the forests that are nearby, the National Park, and then additionally the, the wildernesses that we have in this area. Today I'm being introduced to these lands by a few locals who are more than happy to show off the quality of powder in the area. We head out from Triangle Sea Ranch, one of the local lodges here, and almost immediately we are in some of the deepest snow I have seen all season, and we are experiencing winter in the best way possible. We're right on the Continental Divide Snowmobile Trail System. The Continental Divide Snowmobile Trail System has been named as the number one or number two snowmobile trail system in the western United States for years and years. Thousands of miles of groomed trails, open metal riding, mountain riding, boondocking. It's just there's something here for everybody from the most advanced rider to the to the beginner. Snowmobiling is a really big sport out in this area. In fact I can hear one right now. There's a trail that runs you know kind of from Pine Dale up through to West Yellowstone, Montana even, you know, there's lodges along the way. So there's a lot of, of winter activities. There's dog sledding, everything. Dog sledding is a fun one. Instead of horsepower, I was counting dog power. Looks like eight. This is a unique way to explore the wilds of Wyoming or any winter wonderland for that matter. It has a totally different feel from anything else and just puts an exclamation point on your adventure. At the end of a day of snowmobiling, snowshoeing, dog sledding, or whatever you set your mind to, there are plenty of winter lodges and hotels near Dubois or other towns like Landing. But in a fun way, the towns themselves actually become a big part of your experience. It seems like a lot of the towns in this area, or you know, a lot of towns in Wyoming, still have the, the main street sort of atmosphere. They still have the storefronts, like apartments up top, storefronts, things like that. It's, it's great, and everybody decorates their main street. So. They're great towns. They're towns where there's a lot of history. There's a lot of families that are still around, that the families themselves have a lot of history with the town. And then, you know, really a lot of people come from the outside. Um, you know, people come from all over and end up living here because they love it here. And it's easy to see why from the quality of the scenery and, of course, the snow. Dubois is just a half hour from Grand Teton National Park and an hour from Yellowstone. So once you've exhausted yourself snowmobiling, there are plenty of other attractions to pique your interest. This entire area is truly a destination apart from everywhere else. Winter in the Absorcas and winters in Grand Teton and Yellowstone is, is something somebody should put on their bucket list. It's something you got to do in your life. It's just a special, special environment. It's uh, something that everybody really should do. If you want to explore the Dubois area, it's really easy to get to. You just head north from Interstate 80 on Highway 287 until it turns into Wyoming Highway 26. Now it's about a three hour trip from I-80 to Dubois, but it is definitely worth it if you are clinging to winter's chill. Well, I'm Stephen Human for At Your Leisure. We need to take a commercial break, but when we come back, Chad Booth is checking out one RV that'll make you want to pull up stakes and hit the road. Razor, Ranger, Sportsman, Ace. There's a Polaris to match your passion. Confident, comfortable, capable, that's Ace. With a solo cockpit, automotive controls, independent suspension, all wheel drive, and up to 45 horses of fuel injected power. Calling it revolutionary would be an understatement.
only have 24 hours left to sign up to win the Brian Head Vacation of a Lifetime and a Camp Chef Stove in One. Sign up on Facebook now through Scenic Southern Utah or at your leisure and win two nights at the opulent Grand Lodge, a day of skiing, a snowmobile trip, and a snow cat tour. Plus, a Camp Chef Pro 60 grill that you can take on your adventure. You've only got 24 hours, so sign up now for the Brian Head Vacation and the Camp Chef Stove from Cedar City Brian Head Tourism and at your leisure. You climb. We invent. You carve. We refine. You side hill steeper mountains. We develop more responsive technology. You never stop. We never stop. The 2015 Ski Do Summit. You know, in every category in life, there's always a gold standard. And we're looking at it today as far as fifth wheels go. This is the Alpha Gold by Lifestyle. It is the 3405RK, which stands for Rear Kitchen. And it's our Ray City review for this month. Now, pay close attention, grab a notepad. There's a lot of stuff to show you. And we're gonna start with the inside because this thing is so mind blowing. I can't wait to show it to you, let's go. Yes, you are in a fifth wheel, not somebody's house. Look at this, a landing? Really, I mean, it's just mind boggling. And also, right when you come in the front door, just like you would have at your house, a coat closet. So when the guests come in, you can put your winter coat in here. This trailer, this fifth wheel is really built for full timers and they have spared no expense to make this as comfortable, if not more comfortable than your house. So we're gonna start by going upstairs and check out the master suite. You start with storage space in the hall closet right here as you make your way in. And this is truly a master bedroom suite. It has a door that privatizes your bathroom and it's part of the bedroom. And take a look at the size of this shower. Spacious bathroom, I don't think I've seen one this big in even some of the really expensive motorhomes. Now, coming further into the master suite, take a look at this. Full laundry, washer, dryer. Not a combo, one of each. So you can be doing your laundry chores just like anybody would at home. With a small slide, they managed to expand the master bedroom. This is a full queen size plus mattress. You've got your own entertainment center in the bedroom, a full dresser below. But if you come down into the salon, you'll see this is really designed not only for your own comfort, but for entertaining, you have a conversation area here with a sofa, which is also a place for your guests to sleep because it's a hide a bed And these two recliners over here that are just like you find in your theater. They're soft and overstuffed and you've got a place to put your goodies and your drinks and your snacks. You can recline them up and you can watch the huge big screen TV across the room. Dining for two, but you can expand the table settings so that it's dining for four it's got slide outs on either end and you can actually expand it for dining for six. And here's the neat thing. If you want it as just a two person dining cubby, you've got two chairs and you leave a lot of open space. Your guest chairs, while the upholstery matches, notice these actually are folding chairs. And so you can store them away in the basement and only need them when you have company come out. Isn't that pretty slick? This fifth wheel has a patio area. And notice that it's got a horizontal line on the awning instead of having to come down and cut off your area here and at the back of the door. It leaves it open, it's airy, and it's easy to maneuver around it. But with the slide out here, it kind of creates a patio effect. Time to say goodbye for this product review. We'll look for you next time on the Ray City RV product review. Check this one out. You're going to want it. Family, a simple word that carries more meaning than we can even understand.
We base our entire lives around the smiles of our children and the moments that become cherished memories. At Ray City RV, we understand the importance of that family bond. As a family-owned business since 1946, we've been giving our customers the chance to make those memories in the back country of the West. Early spring savings on all Ray City RV camp trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes can make it more affordable than ever before. Ray City and Roy, turning dreams into memories one trip at a time. You go through the day-to-day -day repeating what you did yesterday. Don't you wish you could access that piece of your life that's missing? Find the beauty, serenity, family fun, or anything else that's missing from your life in the Cedar City Bryan Head area. Gain access to your adventure, whether it's camping, hiking, the arts, festivals, or just a getaway. Visit CedarCityAYL.com for details on all the adventures that you can access in scenic Southern Utah. You only have 24 hours left to sign up to win the Brian Head Vacation of a Lifetime and a Camp Chef Stove in one. Sign up on Facebook now through Scenic Southern Utah or at your leisure and win two nights at the opulent Grand Lodge, a day of skiing, a snowmobile trip, and a snowcat tour. Plus, a Camp Chef Pro 60 grill that you can take on your adventure. You've only got 24 hours, so sign up now for the Brian Head Vacation and the Camp Chef Stove from Cedar City Brian Head Tourism and at your leisure. I can't figure out this equation. Ooh, 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 stop, 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 stop. I'm sorry. I'm from Triple S Polaris. You missed the most important variable of all. Service to the power of three. We take service that seriously. Now, where is my Nobel Prize? Want to know what service really means? Come to Triple S Polaris. Service to the power of three. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are here at the viewpoint overlooking Long Canyon and it is just spectacular. And, and that word actually gets overused and in this area, you can't get used enough. No, that's exactly right. You can see the LaSalle's, the snow-covered LaSalle's in the background and, and uh, Moab is currently getting dumped on some snow right now and you just, you see one thing after another out here. It's just amazing. And that's the neat thing about jeeping is there are so many different experiences. So what we're going to do right now is go and see what some other people have found today. You know, you're often driving down the highway and you see all these different roads, you know, when you're, you're traveling around. So it's fun to actually get out and see where those go. That's what I've enjoyed about taking, you know, this rig or other rigs that I've had is it's, it's that exploration and seeing, you know, where does that fork in the road go? You're in a Jeep, you got almost 360 degree views all the way around you. You can stop whenever you want and take pictures and, you know, and just enjoy it. It's a, it's a trip at your pace. Going down the highway, you're going a lot quicker. You know, you're going 65 miles an hour, and yeah, you still get to see a lot of stuff, especially in that part of the country. You know, going for a drive, it works just fine. But it, it's amazing that not even five miles off of the beaten path, off of that highway, there's stuff that just blows your mind, that that has been sitting there. How on earth did I drive past all of this? It's, it's just a whole different perspective. You know, for someone who's never been to Moab, or even those that have been to Moab before, come down and, and, and check it out. The temperatures are in the mid-70s, it's really popular this time of year, and a lot of the crowds are gone. They can rent a Jeep from us, and that's what a lot of people want to do, and still get, you know, not be scared, I guess. That, that was one of the things about the trail we went on today, is this is something you could run in in, in a stock Jeep, or as, as Dave put it, my wife's Jeep. Uh, that was nice of him to surprise me like that. Years ago, I had one that I could beat on, and we did. Uh, it, it's just two different, two different things. But I, I, I guess the, the whole point is, you going off road isn't going to ruin your vehicle. You just got to go on the right trails. As you can see, jeeping means a lot of things to a lot of different people. It's so great to get out with your family and friends and enjoy the spectacular scenery, the views, the colors, everything is just amazing. Yeah, but right now we got to get to our trailhead adventure, but when we come back, we're going to be showing you a state park that we saw up above us. 
You've heard it said before, build a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door. Ralph Waldo Emerson's credited with saying that, or something like it, more than a century ago. And here in the 21st century, that phrase is more true than ever before. Innovations are hitting the scene faster now than we can process them. New phones, new tablets, you name it. Outdoor recreation is pretty much the same way. Where there's a need, someone will come up with a new idea to meet it. Such was the case with Christopher J. Hoffman, the CEO of Rhino Motors in Beaverton, Oregon. What I really want is a some vehicle that gets me around the urban landscape that has a lot of power to go up the hill, has a reasonable amount of range, and allows me to mingle with people in a dense crowd. There was only one problem. What Christopher was describing didn't exist. So he started working out ideas. But the proverbial light bulb didn't illuminate until a fishing trip with his 13-year-old daughter. Just out of the silence, she says, hey, Daddy, I saw this one-wheeled motorcycle in a video game. Could you actually build that? And I'm like, I don't know. What's that look like? And she gets out a piece of paper and draws me a sketch and shows me this thing. And I'm like, oh. And that was the beginning of the Rhino one-wheeled motorcycle. Basically, it's a motorized unicycle. The Rhino runs off a self-adjusting gyroscope that constantly balances the rider while he steers. It's kind of similar to a Segway scooter, only in this case, you're sitting instead of standing. There's no gears, there's no transmission, there's no oil, there's no seals. Um, it's simply two, you know, rugged electric scooter motors, some timing belts similar to the, the camshaft drive on your car that goes 30 to 60,000 miles, and a couple of ball bearings. By moving the upper body back and forth, you're able to roll the tire back and forth and go around a turn while keeping your balance over the patch on the ground. And, and, and the truth is, it looks like it's really hard to ride, but the truth is, is it's not. Your body muscle memory feels like you're riding a bike. It is the weirdest thing. It wasn't until I started riding this thing around in the city that I discover people take their phones out and take pictures and, and they follow you around and they think you're riding a magic carpet or UFO or something. It's amazing. I think it's cool because it looks like the um, bike from the Lorax, right? I like the look of it. Thank you. Yeah. I think it looks like a lot of fun. Now, the Rhino can be ridden just about everywhere pedestrians can walk, which in some cities includes sidewalks, as long as the speed doesn't exceed 12 miles an hour. Metropolitan areas have begun looking closely at the Rhino since it is a zero emission vehicle that is 11 times more efficient than the average car and three times more efficient than the highest mileage scooter on the market. With a 15 mile radius per battery charge, it's possible that in the coming years, the Rhino will become a much more common sight in urban areas where space and resources are at a premium. All of that sounds good to Christopher, but after seven years of design, trial, error, and success, his creation has become more than just a powered unicycle. It's sort of turned from a personal interest to, you know, almost a life journey. Um, the life journey turns into an experience of, um, you know, I can't really will the future I want into existence, but I can do an awful lot to reduce the obstacles to get there. And that's exactly what Christopher Hoffman is doing. He may not have built a better mousetrap, but for those looking for a fun way to get around in the outdoors, it's the next best thing. From the Trailhead, I'm Terry Wood. United States Army, Mormon pioneers, stagecoach travelers, and the Pony Express all met at Camp Floyd Museum, this week's featured Utah State Park. Camp Floyd was constructed in 1858 to suppress the supposed Mormon rebellion. Once it was clear no rebellion would take place, the outpost grew until at one time it was the largest military installation in the country. Today, Camp Floyd State Park Museum features three original structures and the Pioneer Cemetery. The museum building itself was once the commissary for the camp and one of the first structures completed. Camp Floyd is a perfect day-use facility just west of Eagle Mountain on Highway 73. Utah State Parks, adventures for everyone. 
It's all new from the ground up. New rack system, new LED headlights and taillights, new chassis, and new improved ergonomics. Introducing the all new Arctic Cat ATVs. Filthy, clean, fun. A powder day in the trees. A morning of crisp air and blue skies. A winter destination in your own backyard. Twillin County is all of them in one. It's time to experience a new adventure you never knew you were missing. It's time to find out what's just over the mountain. Tooele County, Utah. The Wasatch Front is your home. Tooele is your backyard. Well, welcome back to At Your Leisure. We're here at Dead Horse Point State Park, and this is absolutely Splendiferous, if that's a word. That's a word. Phenomenal. <laughs> All those amazing Spectacular. Words. You know, I got to come up with a new one. I get in trouble. So, <laughs> but it is absolutely beautiful. We just came up the Schaefer Trail, and we just one turn after another was just a ooh, check that out. Ooh, look at that. Because it was snowing up. And I haven't seen that before. So it was really cool with the white, with the red rocks. It was amazing. And of course, as as always with Utah, if you don't like the weather, just wait a few minutes. You can see it's cleared off and yeah. it's amazing now. Yeah, there's snow all around us, but it's hard to see. But it was really neat. What did you think of it, Jaden? It was really. It was, it, it was really it just was really, really. really. <laughs> it was really. Yeah. All right. So, but we, we have been having a great time today, but right now we need to get to our calendar of our events and our prize winner. Hey, Wyoming fans. Steve Human here. I've got our winner for this week. We got this Toyota Land Cruiser with their AYL sticker right there. C88 3HV. He's actually in the car over here, but he doesn't know when he's going to win. So, you're our winner. Call us at 801 947 8888 to claim your prize. And for the rest of you, remember you only have 24 hours to sign up to win our Camp Chef stove and our Brian Head Vacation in One on Facebook. So, sign up now. Congratulations to our contest winner. That's awesome. Now, we're going to make our way back to Moab. And while we do that, why don't you check out next week's show? Spring is coming early and we are celebrating next week as we hit the waters of Lake Powell and the beauty of Page, Arizona. What can you expect from an early season trip to Powell? We'll show you. Then we'll preview an event that will make motocross riders want to hit the track. It's a celebration of dirt and speed and we'll have it all for you next week on At Your Leisure. Well, next week's show looks great, and today was absolutely awesome. What'd you guys think? It really was so much fun. There was a lot of different weather out there, and it made the trail even that much more interesting. Yeah, that's that's right, Derek. We went from beautiful sunny to snowing and everything else. Steve from Canyonlands Jeep Adventures showed us all the fun places to go. Thanks a lot, Steve. We really appreciate it. That was great, Steve. Thank you so much. So until we get together next time. With your family and friends, in the great outdoors at your, your leisure. Welcome, or welcome, excuse me. Hi. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, welcome, welcome. Dang it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, the walls are just incredible. Commercial break. And? Are we supposed to be moving or are we waving at the birds? <laughs> hey guys, if you like that video, you're gonna wanna watch all of our other AYL videos. You're gonna wanna like it, you're gonna wanna share it, and you're gonna wanna subscribe, right? See all the buttons right here? <laughs> This is what you're going to want to do, click, right? Click, click, click. on them because we have some really cool videos, all kinds of behind the scenes stuff, bloopers of Alicia crashing and stuff. Why are you going to sell me out like that, Steven? So you want to click all of these things and subscribe to our channel because At Your Leisure is awesome. And uh, we'll see you here for more videos.